Ուրեմը հատկապես, որպես պոտենցալ մեր դրող ինձ մի քանի հարց աստեղ հետաքրքրում, մասնավորապես խոսացիք վերջին նաև ձեր ուղերցի ժամանակ և նախնտրական պայքարզարշավի ժամանակ, որ մինչև 24 միլիոն շրջանարորություն � խնդիրը առաջանում չարաշահումների ուրեմ ռիսկը, ստեղ ինչպես գիտեք ամարեղան դեպքեր եպր խոշոր ձերնարկությունները ազեներ բազմացրեցին և հարկերից խուսապեցին, այսինքն եթե ոյնական դաշտում աշխատող � ստեղ ուրեմը լուծելու և մյուս խնդիրը դրայք կապված խթաների հետա կապված, այսինքն մի ձերնարկություն, որը հասել է 24 միլիոնի և պետք է մի քիչ աչի դարնա 25-26, ինչ ենք անելու, հենց 25 հասավ բոլոր հարկ Say what was it about in English? <laughs> so it was about the tax reform, uh, and uh, basically the question is: there will be uh, smaller companies will be freed from tax, but we've seen a lot of abuses in these areas where big companies actually create fake small companies. In the past, it was the case, and then we have an unequal uh, competitive environment. So my question is: how the government is going to address this issue? Because particularly for mid-sized companies, this can become uh, can become a problem potentially. Thank you. Տեսեք ինչից ացակել այդ խնդիրը, երբ որ շատ մարդիկ բողոքում են, որ բողոքում էին, որ հարկային տեսություն մեզ անդատ դու գանում այդ մենք ենքան փոքր շրջանարություն ունենք, որ չենք կարող հաշվիր դրամար� որոտև մենք կարծում ենք, որ աղկատության հաղթահարման նաև առաշնային գործիքը պետք է լինի աշխատանքը, պետությունը պետք է աշխատելու հնարավոր, ռեալ հնարավորություններ ստեղծի և այս 24 միլիոնը այդ աշխատելու հաստատենք հդմայական, եսպես ասաց, դիկտատուրա են առումով, որ չպետք ալինի որև է տեղ, որ որև է խանութ, որև է ոպեկտ, այսինքը չհաշվարի իր արևտուրը, սրան լինելու է շատ կոշտ և շատ ուժեղ հակազտեություն, � բայց տեսեք, եվ որ շատ խոշոր ընկերությունները կիսվել էին մի քանի մասերի, այդ հարցը հառաջացել էր ոչ որենցդրության պատճարով և լուծվեց ոչ որենցդրության բերումով։ Դա արվում է կաղաքական համապատասխան իրավիճակում և այդպեսի երևույթներ չլին է։ Բայց մենք կարծում ենք, որ հարկային որենց գդրության փոպոխությունը իսկ ապես շատ կարևոր է ներդրումների համար, որտև մենք հիմա գնում ենք համահարդ եկամտահարկ սահմանելու ճանապարով, � հինք տարվա ընթացքում կդարձնենք 20 տոքոս համահարդ եկամտահարկ և նաև շահութահարկ գումարած դիվիդենտի հարկ գումարը հավասար կլինի եկամտահարկին, այսինք էր ստեղ ունինպես մենք որոշակի չեցում կունենան և 
որովհետև կարծում են ամեն ներդրողի շատ առաջին ներդին հետաքրում է թե ինչքան եկամտահար պետք է ինքը վճարի իր վարցած աշխատողների համար եւ ինչպես պետք է հարկվի իր շահույթը եւ այս առումով կարծում եմ սա կարևոր քայլ է հայաստանը ներդրումների համար առավել գրավիչ դարձնելու իմ աստով շնորհակալություն Ladies and gentlemen uh, I'm Thank you, Mr. Uh, Prime Minister. I'm seeing that uh, uh, the session question and answer uh, is uh, very, um, very dense. I would like, please, uh, the people who uh, are going to pose the questions to, uh, to strict that uh, very, uh, very much. And uh, the Honorable Prime Minister, would you please also try uh, to be as, uh, uh, as short as possible? Thank you very much. <laughs> Armin Malkasian, uh, I work for HSBC Pride Bank here in Zurich. Uh, thank you, Mr. Pashinyan, for a very informative and uh, inspiring speech. Um, yeah. And I, is it? Yeah. And I'm just trying to quote you, and you say where we want to be is that we want to conduct an economic revolution and establish a very favorable investment framework, and all that depends on us, right? And you have also suggested in your um, government program previously that the economic growth should be based on the participatory and inclusive yeah. uh, framework, right? So that the wide spectrum of participants, uh, beneficiaries could really in engage. But let's take a look on that uh, economic objective and opportunities from the eyes of, uh, uh, how to say, passive and private investors, such as those who are in our room here, right? And who, argument's sake, have 100,000 of uh, annual uh, in savings and want to invest, come and invest in Armenia. And we have millions of Armenians who are inspired and want to do this today, right? And what Armenia does offer to them? Let me list that, those. Bank deposits, which are very favorable in their interest rates, uh, as opposed to uh, the, the, the same in any other banks. The second is real estate, which is really growing, and that's what you have been suggesting as well. But, and here is my challenging point. We don't have third, fourth, fifth, and any other opportunities. Yeah. Why so? Because the capital markets are undergrown, and uh, we can't really invest in large stock companies in Armenia through you know, uh, buying the shares, bonds, etc. We can't really invest in any investment funds or private equity and participate with these to local, regional, infrastructure, service, and any other industries in Armenia. And here lies a lot of opportunities for Armenia. So my question is what the government and the central bank, because the, it, it is the regulator of that sector, are actually and practically uh, you know, planning to do to really grow the capital markets. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, to be honest, it is very uh, difficult to answer, answer that question very shortly, but I will try. <laughs> Why uh, we, we don't have a capital market uh, in Armenia? And I think and I, I'm sure that it, uh, it, it, it was because of monopolies because the uh, economic uh, economic field and economic all economic activities were under the government control and uh, within last eight uh, eight months we actually eradicated monopolies and we open space for any economic activity so i don't think that it's gov it's government duty to establish for example capital market the duty of a government is to open real opportunity to create level playing field and to make country uh, as attractive as possible in terms of democracy in terms of political uh, uh, um, uh, uh, in terms of um, uh, independent judiciary in, in terms of stability etc etc and of course in terms of uh, legislation and uh, I think we have done already something toward that and that's why we now uh, I've just invited all uh, all potential investors to come to Armenia and to invest so I, 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 I would like to say that there is no any any restriction 
uh, at least in um, uh, in terms of political will and opportunity to have any kind of a, uh, uh, economic activity in Armenia. Of course, now we we uh, uh, maybe we have some um, some uh, problem in in terms of legislation. And uh, so we in, uh, invite um, all our uh, potential partners to to uh, to make uh, make um, proposals in in terms of uh, legislation and to improve our uh, our legislation to make our economic field more more attractive, more open, and more uh, more uh, competitive. So uh, it's our vision. Uh, we, we, our duty to create opportunity. I don't think that um, the government should uh, should uh, enter into business, into into economic uh, relations between uh, between uh, economic actors. Yeah, really. Ah yes, there is there is also one more thing. Uh, we we understand that we. Uh, we uh, we should uh, we sh we should um, make our regulatory, as I said in my speech, um, um, uh, lower and lower. We, we we should reduce the number of regulation regulation con connected with uh, doing business, etc., etc. And there is no doubt uh, that we have really uh, political will for doing that, and we will do that. Uh, Marcus Bakhtasarian from MBM Bakhtasarian GmbH. Um, my question is about the topic data protection and privacy. Uh, I know by myself, because I'm in this field also in Armenia, Armenia claims itself to be the next IT hub, especially in artificial intelligence and in machine learning. But the problem from a Swiss perspective is that Armenia is on the blacklist from Switzerland when it comes to data protection. So short question, what does your government do to avoid this for the future? It's a very important issue for us and um, uh, the, uh, the, 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 the digitalization Digitalization is um, on the top of our agenda, and of course, uh, the security of any data of also is very important for us. And now we are going to um, establish a new ministry, a Minister of uh, High Technologies and uh, and innovations. And uh, the one of the general tasks for that ministry. Uh, to uh, to make um, to make our uh, digital environment more secure and uh, to to create real guarantees for uh, for for data uh, security and of course uh, we understand that it is very important for uh, for making our investment environment more attractive Dear Mr. Pashinyan, welcome to Switzerland. And thank you very much for your introduction to your very ambitious plans for the future of Armenia. Uh, why did you abolish the, the Ministry of Diaspora? Today, the diaspora is in a kind of a. Is that, is that true? This is what we heard in the uh, newspaper. We, we are uh, thinking on that. No, thinking? Not yet. Uh, the decision uh, wasn't it hasn't made. hasn't been yet. done yet yeah. because this is what we read. Uh, the diaspora is yeah. in a kind of a disarray. Yeah. And uh, it has to have some kind of a channeled uh, uh, road towards Armenia now. Do you have any plans for this at all? Or yeah, thank you. Thank you for question. You know, uh, our, our task to make the uh, work of our government more efficient. Uh, what's uh, what's wrong with with uh, with this um, um, with this topic with the Ministry of the Diaspora? I can explain. The Dias Minister of the Diaspora has, uh, for example, a duty to make uh, um, activity in the field of education 
in the diaspora. But the same duty has uh, the Ministry of Education. And we have two ministries doing, doing the same thing in the same place and um, uh, disturbing each other. Because the, uh, the, uh, uh, the body that should um, create a policy uh, of uh, national education is uh, Ministry of Education. But, uh, and uh, we saw within last eight months uh, many, many contradictions between two ministries in terms of uh, how we, we should, uh, we, uh, how, uh, what we should um, educate in, in, in the diaspora schools and how with, with which kind of uh, manuals, etc., etc. That we need to have one policy in, in, in education field because we need also uh, to make the um, um, identity of Armenians in diaspora and in Armenia closer. But uh, I am uh, uh, um, afraid that our current policy make our uh, identity um, uh, 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 more and more different. And the, uh, the existence of two ministries in field of education, one of the, uh, one of the cause of that, the same situation we, we have uh, in, in, the, in the field of culture, which we, we have two um, uh, policy in, the culture, uh, in, the, uh, in terms of culture. One policy for uh, Armenians in Armenia, and the other policy for Armenians living outside Armenia, outside of, of Armenia, and I think it is a big problem, because our task to bring our people together, not separate them. And uh, I, I think and all we know that the education and culture is the, are the general uh, tool uh, to, uh, to create national identity. And, uh, w and as we now uh, are going in, in, um, uh, in the way to create different national identity, that means that we, we, uh, we make our ties um, um, weaker and weaker. Now, uh, there are uh, some other examples. All our, all our ministries has, have uh, some duty connected with diaspora. And in fact, the Ministry of Diaspora repeating the functions of the other, uh, other um, ministries, and in fact, uh, the other ministries and uh, the Ministry of uh, Diaspora very, very often uh, disturb each other. Our views to, to uh, bring all this function and activity together, and I think that it would be better to, uh, to have a, a function of special ambassador of uh, prime minister, um, uh, which will work special ambassador on diaspora that uh, will, uh, will be able to coordinate all activities of all ministries connected with the diaspora and he will be representative of prime minister and he will be uh, able to coordinate all activities and represent, uh, represent uh, Prime Minister in the diaspora and represent Prime Minister uh, in the ministries and, uh, and uh, bring together all, all policies that, uh, that we have uh, toward diaspora. That's our general idea and our idea to make our policy toward diaspora more and more efficient.